Hi everybody, my name is Shannon. Welcome to my channel, Another Yarn. Thank you so much for joining me today. I greatly appreciate it. Oh my goodness, this is my favorite video to make so far every week. It is the culmination of everything that I've worked on throughout the week. Sometimes it's the procrastinated things that I didn't work on. You know how that goes. But it never ceases to amaze me, so far anyway, how much does actually get accomplished. This week, I was really busy. I did a bunch of stuff. And I really didn't think that I got uh, too much done until I started gathering all my stuff around me. And I went, well, wait a minute, I do have stuff done. Okay, so I'm not going to lie. Um, I was waiting for the sun to go down and everything, you know, there you go, right? You know, Sunday night doing Monday video. And uh, I I, I, I kind of gut checked and finished a project. Yeah, I did. I did. I didn't want to do it. Can you guess which one it is? Can you guess? It's got arms. Yeah. Okay. It's not a sweater. No, no, no. It's not a sweater. Where'd it go? Where did it go? I finished my ragdoll robot amigurumi whatever you want to call it little little creature look at this look look i did it oh my goodness i finished it i did the little gut check and i finished the arms i had everything done except for the arms and then i'll go ahead and i'll post the picture on how uh the pattern calls for you do you know a little graph or some design right here on this part and then here um i did a line graph um yeah the pattern has one gauge needle. No, I'm not doing that. I just, no, it just, mm -mm -mm. no, no. So I did decide to do, you know, keep it within the, the whole computer graphics and everything. You know, you've got your, your, your going up or down, whatever angle you're looking at, and then the little line graphs and everything. And I thought that kept it still with the computer printout graphic that the robot would have. Um, without being naughty. We did not need the robot to be naughty. No. So really happy to get this done. Um, not gonna lie, if I weren't making this video, this thing would not be done. It would be armless, sitting in my basket, mocking me. Yes, the robot was mocking me. Yes, he was. But I'm really happy that he's finished um, yes, I refer to him as a little boy. I don't know, maybe because, you know, just, you know, he had his little happy meter going on. Uh, I decided no happy meter. Mm -mm, mm -mm. But really happy with getting this one done. I'll have this posted uh, down below the book that I got this from, uh, Ragdoll Crochet. Uh, I uh, I got this on my um, Kindle. I had the, the, script, the, the Kindle app. And on that, you can get a lot of different crochet and knit books and magazines that you can peruse through. All right. Uh, the Kindle app, you know, the Kindle Unlimited on uh, Amazon is pricey. It's like $11.99. But they keep having that scrolling going through like two months for two months free or three months for a dollar kind of a situation. So if you have that, by all means, go check everything out. If you feel like you're getting value and you want to keep it, do it. That's that's your business. Um, but yeah, it's I think it's pricey. It just depends on how much you read. There you go. Just depends on you. That's all there is to it. So I got something done. I got something done. Finished the robot. I mean, yeah. So happy to do that. Um, I thank everyone here that watches my channel because that was pretty much you guys pushing me to get that done, whether you realized it or not, because I did not want to. No, but it's done. It is off my plate. I can give it away and I don't have to look at it ever again until it shows back up at my house with a grandchild. But that's okay. So there, I got something finished, right? And then I, I continued and I'm working on squares and, and there's a, uh, um, the author, her name is Anne Rigord. I think that's how you say her name. I apologize for butchering that, but she's doing 52 squares this year. And for one week only, the square is for free. Okay. That's awesome. So this was square number eight. I got it fresh off the needles. It is not blocked yet. It does lie flat. I have taken a picture of it with it, you know, stretched. <laughs> 
stretched out and everything. Oh, that's funny. Uh, stretched out and everything. It does lie flat. It will block out really nice. I mean, look at that. Look how pretty that is. Isn't that gorgeous? So this was block number eight. I'm using a big twist value yarn. I'm getting approximately a 16 inch square using size eight knitting needles. Obviously you change the materials, you change your knitting, you, your gauge, you'll get bigger or smaller. That's just how that works. I've weighed these, this one, 75 grams. So this was number eight. Uh, number seven was the red one, and that was also 75 grams. And number five, I know I skipped number six. Number five, not for any reason, it just, I didn't, I didn't know I was gonna do all these. This one was 82 grams, and that's, I believe, because we have all the extra stitches. It will lay flat when I am not so lazy and I actually block them. Yeah, just block them. So I have three done right now. Uh, the blue one, was free all the way up until Paris time, February 25th. Uh, so the author does have those. It is Paris time uh, for them. Um, definitely, I'll have those particular squares linked down below. But look at that particular designer and follow her. Um, so then you don't miss out. That's all I'm going to say is if you're interested. If you're not interested, no harm, no big deal. But if you're interested and you want them for free, follow along. So that's that one. So I got two things done and I'm still deciding what I'm going to do with all the squares. Oh, that's the other thing. Because of the amount of yarn, uh, 75 grams to 82 grams right now, uh, I'm using the big twist yarn so I can get two per ball of yarn, two per skein of yarn. And that yarn runs for 49 regular price, but it's a Joanne exclusive. Don't pay full price. Don't, don't pay full price. You can get it on sale. They've always got sales, discounts, etc. But that's how much it is. Um, so to do this, to make all 52 squares, if that's my choice, I would need 26 balls of yarn. That's it. And I generally, I've gotten them um, like somewhere around the 275-ish range is my average, I think. I've gotten them as low as 250, but that was all kinds of stacking coupons. But about 275-ish, you know, 275-3, uh, hello, that's pretty cool. And like I said, needing 26 just to make all the squares. Not bad. And uh, I don't know, that would be huge. I would, I'm going to end up making more than one project with them because they are big. They're, you know, 16 inches. So I'll put them together, make different colors, put, you know, I'm not sure. I, I don't know. I didn't have a plan when I started this. It just leapt at me. It did. It did. I, mm -mm, no, nope, not taking blame. You're like, but you're the one doing it. I know, I know, it's true. So anyway, I did, I got something done. So that's exciting. I know, that's fun. And I filled out my planner. Okay, I'm not gonna lie. I filled it out right before the video. I have to get better at that. Didn't I say that last week that, you know, I was gonna get better at that? I lied. Well, I didn't lie. I just didn't follow through. There's a difference. I meant it when I said it, I did. Um, so it's not really a lie. It's just, I just didn't follow through with my convictions. That's okay. So I got those done. Yay. Oh, and things that I started. I started this mystery yarn challenge, making the ice cream cone. I got to attach it. My granddaughter's over, so she's going to help me. And then I've got all of, oh, I've got all of these little ice cream balls. Yeah. And I'm trying to figure out how I want to attach them on here. You know, because it, it's reminiscent when I was in Germany and then there was the, the little the little tiny ice cream that you could get. And yeah, it, it, it it's a thing. It is. Uh, not like the Americans and everything where we're like, I want three scoops and it's like this tall. I'm not going to lie, I like that. <laughs> I like both. I'm just, I, I like ice cream. Yeah, so I've got this. So I'm going to do something with that and attach those. I think my granddaughter, like I said, she's going to help me. She likes it because I had it just pinned last time and she likes it that they flop around, you know, kind of like some glorified fidget toy. I don't know. Yeah. So it's been fun. I'm enjoying it. And I'm going to add um, some more. I've got the, the red and I don't know where the cherry took off to, but it is a smaller piece. So I've got this and I'm making it um, it was suggested to add more of the red in, so I'm going to make a bunch of those too. Little smaller ones, like little berries and stuff, and putting those in, in between. And I think it'll be a lot of fun. And then with all the yarn that I got, I'm not going to just make this. I got a good selection. I'm going to do something else. I just haven't decided what yet. Right? I did, yeah, yeah, so there you go. So 
oh my gosh, I mean, starting projects, not bad. So that was a started project. That one was new. I look at my little thing. Yep. And then uh, another one I got to work on that I was really pleased with is, do you remember the car project? I mean, look at this. I gotta get some, okay, so we got this. Do I have any of that little stretchy stuff around here? No, that's in the other room. Oh, this stuff, yeah. So this is um, barber cord. You can get, see, it's, I don't know if you can pick it, if it'll pick it up, but it's it's like a little hollow tube. So you can get it on Amazon, a big, huge roll of it for like five or six dollars, and it's called barber cord. And you can also, if you're lucky enough to have a local yarn store next to you or anywhere near you, they do have this, and it's called a try-on cord. And reason being is you put this, I'm trying to look to get it on the little, you put it on your knitting needles like that, and you push it down really good, so you can see that that's on really tight because you don't want to lose your stitches. And then you can just slide it and then you can try on your garment because, see, I want to show you this because, you know, that this particular piece looks like it's super tiny, scrunched up on those needles. Um, the yoke of this was 240 stitches. Uh, so, you know, I've got that and um, got that all the way around. I put short rows on this too. So hopefully those will turn out really well. So let's see, here's the, that's the front. So the front does go lower than the back. Here's the back So I did put a bunch of the short rows. I did the German short row. Um, I think I did pretty good. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting better, right? I mean, aren't we all learning? Aren't we all just kind of practicing and learning and kind of fudging our way along? Pretty much. So I really like this. I think I'd showed this before. This this stretches. This is the Hobby Lobby Cozy Toes. It's an acrylic. I mean, look at that. I mean, did that look like it was going to fit me like that? I mean, come on. But this stuff stretches really well. It doesn't look like it's going to fit, you know, baby's head and everything be too tight. It will not be too tight. Um, so there we go. I'm not 100% not sure of the size that I'm making. Like you said, um, the yoke went up to 240 stitches all the way around. And then I just split cent split off for the sleeves. So I've got that. So now I'm excited. I can put this back in my car. This is my car project. And I was right at the point where I needed to split for the arms. And now that I've done that, it's just knit in the round. Continue, continue, continue. Mindless, enjoyable knitting when I'm passenger in the car and hubby and I are going someplace. So I have not had an actual car project for quite some time. It was while I was doing the yoke of it. And then when it needed to be split, I brought it back in the house and I just haven't had a car project for a while. So really happy with that. I have a visible progress and difference, which is a lot more than it looks because again, 240 stitches around is a lot of stitches. But I really like that with a smaller yarn and circumference and everything because with the knitting motion, I kind of flick. It's just like a, a very small motion, not uh, not big and exaggerated. When I get into the bigger yarns, like the blanket, my Fair Isle blanket, that's surprisingly slower for me to do round for round than it is for the this little tiny thing. It's whatever, right? It's what, it's what we get used to. It's what we get comfortable with. And yeah, that's kind of what I got used to. So there's that. But that's my car project and it's growing and, and that's exciting. So it's closer to getting done. I mean, it's not just the yoke anymore. I got past the, the decorative part. So that's fun. What else? Oh, I just talked about my Fair Isle blanket. So let me go ahead and show you that. I had to go and uh, get into the box because uh, I had packed away the yarn for this. And I had to, oh, here I did it again. And I had to go grab another skein of the Red Heart brushed yarn. So this is my second skein of this. This is Red Heart brushed Super Saver yarn, five ounces, 141 grams, 253 yards. That's my second one of these. And you can see it has grown quite a bit. I think last time we were like 22 inches. I'm not sure how much it is now, but it, it it's now it's warm. It's warm and it's comfortable to work with uh, sitting on my lap and everything. You know, we're getting into the warmer. Well, we will be getting into the warmer month. So that'll be That'll be nice to try to get this done while it's still semi-chilly out. 
that would be a good thing. I don't know. Should have finished this row. Didn't realize I didn't quite have that one done, so I could just hold it up. But, you know, look at that. Really enjoying this. What I think I'm going to do, so I've got these little blocks of basket weave. I'm going to do one more. So I'm going to have three right here. So I did, this is the fair aisle here, the brush, oh, wool ease fair aisle, 80% uh, acrylic, 20% wool. This is the brushed uh, red heart acrylic, wool ease fair aisle. Here's the acrylic again. Here's the fair aisle. And I'm going to do three squares high of the brushed acrylic this time. And uh, this is three squares. This is one, three two, two. This is going to be three. I don't know. I'm just making it up as I go, but it's enjoyable. It feels great. It really, really does. And I've got enough of that wool ease and the nice purple and lavender colors. And I also have it in the, the golden taupe color that I absolutely love. So I have plenty to do just about anything else I want to do with them and really pleased with the blanket and how well it's coming out. Um, just spectacular absolutely having a blast so i did work on that one for my husband he's gotten a lot of things his sweater unfortunately didn't see any love this week it really did not i don't think i even put a round on it if i did do any of it it might have been a round but that would have been it so i really don't think i picked it up this week i'm about three inches to where i can put the sleeves on um I've already got the sleeves most of the way done. I've got about another inch or two. I'm not positive. Once I get to the body, to the complete underarm where I need it to be, I'm going to put the sleeves on one of those try-on cords for him and hold that up and everything and pull it onto his arm and then see if I how much more I need to do before I put that on. So I knew that when I did the sleeves that I needed to do a little bit more work. That's okay. So I know. He's, he's been patient, but he's got a lot that I've been making for him. So yeah, it's, it's fine. It's fine. Let's see. Oh, and then, um, if you saw and everything, I took a brioche class earlier in the week, last week, and it's not a project, but it's a swatch. So this is my practice piece. Got my balls here. I'm going to drop. That's my practice piece right here with the white with the brioche on that side and then the black being more dominant on this side. So we're practicing and right now I'm supposed to be intentionally dropping stitches, making mistakes and then correcting those mistakes, which is a wonderful skill to learn, whether it's just um, crocheting. How do you how do you fix your mistakes? Regular knitting. How do you fix any mistakes? What what do you do with those things? And then brioche is just on a completely different level. So I'm really enjoying that class definitely need that I've kind of gotten excited about making a couple of other projects um, but those are time consuming but then again isn't everything um, those take a little bit more brain power mm, to an extent especially if you don't know how to fix your mistakes right you know uh, lifelines are a good thing right so I always talk about them and sometimes I actually put them in yeah one project I am putting the lifelines in is this uh, scarflet I got all my stuff attached to it. I've got this thing right here and I am putting lifelines in this. Um, I don't generally, I just tell people to do it, you know, and then if I make a mistake and I have to pull it out, it's on me, right? But this one I really am. It's, uh, I'm making it on size three needles. This is the Jungle Water Colorway Arcane Fiber Yarn. Any fingering weight yarn would do or sport weight for that matter. Sport weight would be fantastic, right? You know, the smaller weight yarn. And if you did go into a DK, it would just be a really big wide shawl that when you got to the point, because it's like a crescent and I'm getting, see, I've got two of these like leaves here and I had one here. I'm not sure if it gets up to like four leaves across or something, but it does get wider. But, um, you know, just because the pattern tells you to use the smaller yarn doesn't mean you have to. Your, your object will just be larger. That's all. Uh, and I think this would be absolutely stunning. It would be like a big blankety hug if you use that larger yarn. But I have a lot of fingering weight and gorgeous colors, and I loved this pattern, so I'm going with it. But this one doesn't get a lot of love throughout the week because it's a concentration pattern. It's not hard. I just have to really pay attention to it right you know don't don't we you know it's kind of nice to have some differences like it's kind of the opposite complete opposite of my car project you know my car project is just I just want to knit and don't bother me right you know um or 
just it's very simple very simplistic easy to do i don't have to pay attention to a pattern that one's definitely not a car project that's i don't really need to have the tv on and paying it well it's not like i watch tv i listen to tv right you know what i'm getting at um yeah so i don't always watch it visually i just hear it but that's just how that goes and then the other one i know you're waiting to see it i know i know you saw when i showed this this is what has taken up my entire week oh my goodness i am su I, I was actually pretty surprised with the stuff that i just showed you um i really didn't realize that i had picked up anything but my granddaughter's sweater which i had just started yeah mm -hmm. so I'm really proud of this because this is something that I haven't done before. Yes, I've made her a sweater before. My husband egged this on. It's his fault. He eggs on a lot. Have you noticed that? He knows how to push my buttons. We've been married for 32 years. That man knows how to push my buttons. So here is this gorgeous sweater I am making for my granddaughter. And very much like this construction right here is the same as my husband's construction as far as I knit the sleeves first. Then I knit the body up to the sleeves and then, you know, I've got the hole right here, right? The armhole hole. That gets Kitchener stitch and sewn up and everything. Not a problem. And then I'm doing the raglan right here going up to the neckline. So this is the same construction as my husband's. Nice. This is 100% fully stranded knitting for the entire thing. I have never done that before. I've done color work on uh, my purple jumper my sweater that I made for myself. And I'll show you the sweater that I'm working on in my Arcane Fibers because I did get progress of that one also because my car project wasn't ready to put in the car and that one was. So it got some love while we were driving. So this is for my granddaughter and really enjoying this. The, uh, the stitch pattern was partially from a cowl that I had shown previously with a bunch of different Fair Isle patterns to it and I commented that you could really take that and do anything you wanted to with it. You don't have to make the cowl, the hat, the whatever. Any geometric design, any graph, you can put in your knitting, your crocheting, mosaic, Tunisian, just about any way you want to do it because the graph doesn't care what what pattern you use. The graph doesn't care what medium, whether it's knitting or crocheting. It really doesn't. It's just a graph. So collect your graphs. Seriously, you'll have fun. You'll be surprised what you'll use them for. So never have I done an all over color work thing. I, I, I just haven't. So to do this and to come out and to, it's like, yes, I'm going to make this was such a surprise to myself. Um, I knew I wanted to make a sweater for my granddaughter. Again, my husband egged me on. He's like, hey, Ellie, do you have a sweater that fits you anymore? She has one. She does. It's uh, it's a hooded sweatshirt with the pouch in the front, you know, the for your, for your hands. It's called the Wonderful Wallaby, and it's a great pattern. So my intention was to make that again. The only thing I have done on this that I followed the pattern was I cast on, I think it was 36 stitches for the cups. That is the only thing that I followed. I put color work in it. I changed all the other numbers. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not doing that pattern. I, I'm, uh, I'm still going to put a hood on. So we'll see. And I think right now I am where I want to split for that neck, you know, because, um, so you're not just all the way up to the full top and then trying to do a hood and everything. You can't get your head, head and your neck through. So I think right now, um, I need to do something split for here and then going back and forth and just having this kind of like the front of the sweater and then uh, get that as the raglan um, goes ahead and takes up more of those stitches and everything and the neckline gets closer. Then I would go ahead and do what I need to do to make the hood. So yeah, I got decisions, but what progress oh oh you want to see what yarn it is yes yes of course you want to see the yarn let me grab this okay so this is the party yarn joanne's big twist party i mean it's a pretty yarn it really is i've already done a couple sweaters with this yarn different colors this is one of their new colorways this is the bubble tea and you see it's got little flecks of purple in there. It's really pretty. Now, with the pattern that I'm using, and especially pairing it up with that raspberry color, which, remember the ball of that down here? Yeah, I do. P 
pairing it up with here, you can't see the green. So here's the raspberry, here's the bubble tea. These are brand new colorways. I've got quite a few of the older colors, like five or six of them. I bought a lot of it. I was really happy with it. I liked how it worked up. I liked how it felt. Um, so when it came out again, everyone's talking about, oh, the party yarn, Joanne's party yarn. I'm like, dude, you guys are late to the party. I done did that last year, right? You know, I'd, I'm like, whatever. I've, I've already got like sweater plus quantities of all the colors I liked. And then I went to Joanne's and I saw these. Yes, I definitely needed to get them. But I was very disciplined. I mean, overall, I was really disciplined. I got 10 total skeins in this cute little <laughs> Joanne's buddy bag. But I only got 10 skeins. You say only. But, you know, it was $2.99. Got it on sale. There you go. Uh, but just 10. Uh, they had others. They had a lot of other colors. And I'm like, okay, I'm just, I, I got some. I don't need to buy it all. Just walk away. And then I immediately started making something with it. So, hey, that's a win, right? Yay, that's a win. Got it. So definitely having a blast with all of that stuff. I love her sweater. And I did um, I did try it on her. I put it on those try-on cords because my granddaughter is very petite. She's a tiny little girl. Yes, she's eight years old, but she's very tiny. And, you know, I... Um, I measured the arms and everything. It's like, okay, I got this. And I'm making this uh, what would normally be a, for a size eight child, right? And I'm like, okay, I need 11 inches from the underarm down to the, the end of the body. Pretty sure that's what it was. And I'm like, it just looks so short. It just looks so short. When I put it on the cables, it's not short. It's, it's not. It's plenty big enough for her. And she also has room to grow. Like I said, she's pretty tiny. Uh, she's smallest in her class. She's a petite little girl. So um, I was a little concerned, but there was no reason to be. Oh, do you want to see how I'm doing on my sweater, my arcane sweater? Let's see. So I've got, here's my bag that my friend gave me, which is so appropriate for this sweater. My pattern or my project is color coordinated with the bag. That's just so extra. You know, so I've got the bumblebee right here. Um, gnomes and uh, here we go and my sweater I have finished my oh no it's not done no 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 don't don't think that so this is my second cake of the um, busy bee yarn and I only have two of them so that's the second cake of that one and I have finished my first cake of the charcoal color so I've got to go wind up the second one so here we go love that that hasn't changed it's just gorgeous i just you know i'm just so thrilled with it and i have gone all the way that's for the full two cakes of yarn i like the striping sequence i've got in there i did put in some waist shaping not a whole heck of a lot but i did put some waist shaping in there i did have the um the short rows in the back which is why this right here the neckline is a little bit lower in the front than in the back which is what you want for it to be a little more comfortable to wear I did that again with my car project since I'm learning. And uh, I think once I wind the other ball of yarn, it's about another inch, maybe. I, mean, I don't know. I have to try it again to make sure. About another inch, and then I can do my ribbing and whatever treatment that I want on there. And then immediately, I'll do it. Honest, I will. Immediately put the sleeves on needles. I don't want this to sit for two years. This is my second ever yoked color work you know sweater like this adult size and the first one it took me two years now I got this part done fast but when I got to the sleeves it just sat and talked to me it mocked me it did so I don't want this one to do the same thing I really like to get it done um, I'd love to wear it I mean it's it is absolutely amazing I'm looking so forward to wearing this it's just it's gonna be fun there you go and uh, yeah all that great stuff, right? I mean, oh my goodness. So that's what I've gotten uh, up to this week. All the projects and all the things. I, I was able to get two things done and getting that little robot done. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I am so happy that little robot is done. Emma Groomy and making stuffed critters is not difficult. But just like getting to the sleeves of a sweater, I will get to a certain point with an amigurumi or a stuffed critter. And if I set it down and it sits down for a little bit too long, eh, there's a good chance it's not going to see any more love. It just, that's just, that's, it, it's, it's stalled. 
and I'm on to something else. So it was it was uh, definitely a gut check to get that one done. I'm really happy to have it. Um, I think that uh, talking to everybody here has uh, gotten me a little more accountable to get some things done that would normally languish. So uh, I don't know. I, I, I've heard in the comments that uh, I've spurred you guys on to doing things. Well, you've definitely spurred me on to doing things. So here's to continuing to be a positive influence in each other's lives. I like that. I like that a lot. Well, everybody, I'm going to go ahead and let you go. You guys have a great day, night, evening, whatever it happens to be. And I will talk to you again later. Bye-bye.